Welcome to the next video in the Patterns in Nature topic. This video will be looking at the dot point, identify the sites of mitosis in plants, insects and mammals. So this is a fairly straightforward dot point. We simply need to be able to know where exactly mitosis takes place in those three groups of organisms. So let's start off by having a look at our plants. So mitosis occurs in specialized areas of plants called the apical mer meristems, which are found in the tips of the roots and the tips of the stems. So apical simply means the apex, so the very end. These uh, areas of cell division are what we commonly know as buds. So we can have buds on the ends of stems. We can have buds um, on the ends of the roots. They can also occur along the stems in what we call the axials of the leaves. So that's the, the where the leaf joins onto the stem. And these are known as axial meristems. So the apical meristems are found at the ends of either the stem or the root. And the axial are found throughout the middle of the stem where the leaves bud off from the main stem point. So mitosis in these areas result in the in in an increase, sorry, in the length of the plant, obviously growing upwards through the apical meristem on the stem and growing downwards into the ground through the roots. Mitosis also occurs in the meristem tissue, which is more commonly referred to as cambium, which is found between the xylem and the phloem. So we've talked about xylem and phloem a few times now, being that they are vascular tissue. So if we have a look at this magnified image of a plant, so this is a cross-section through the middle of a stem. So the xylem and phloem are uh, located adjacent to one another and then the cambium, so the cells that undergo cell division occur in the middle. So it's mitosis that occurs in this cambium, these red parts here between the phloem and the xylem, that increases the girth of the plant or the width. Okay, and this also gives us information when we cut down trees of how old a tree is based on what we call the tree rings. So each year, a new layer of cambium is laid and that helps us to identify the age of plants. Plants can replace lost parts if the meristem is not destroyed. So if the top of the, if the meristem is not cut off, the plants can continue to regrow flowers, regrow leaves, which is why. Um, when you cut the top off a flower or the bottom off the roots of a plant, they can actually regrow more of the same. Okay, so sorry, we don't want to be cutting the roots off the plant because obviously we're removing that uh, the ap apical meristem from the root end, so it's going to not be able to produce more roots and therefore it won't be able to survive. But flowers, for example, if you cut the flowers off a plant, the plant is able to regrow those flowers. And with plants, mitosis occurs basically throughout the life of the plant. Obviously, some plants, it is seasonal, so they will grow more in some seasons than others. But as a whole, mitosis just takes place throughout the life cycle of the plant. Looking at insects, mitosis occurs in each of the stages of metamorphosis. So metamorphosis is that complex growing and changing process that some insects go through. So the one insect that we can uh, visualize metamorphosis the best with is the butterfly. So a butterfly starts off as an egg, okay, and that hatches and is a caterpillar. Then the caterpillar then becomes what we call a pupa and it wraps itself up and, you know, becomes the little blobby um, organism. And then once it then reaches the next stage, it comes out of its little um hidey hole i can't think of what the chrysalis and is a is a butterfly so completely different to the initial organism that we see coming out of the egg unlike humans who are very similar in structure they just grow in size from childbirth through to old age a butterfly starts as a caterpillar with lots of legs very long and becomes this insect that with has beautiful wings big antennae long legs totally different to what we see being hatched so the larval stage of the caterpillar is where the insects go through 
a complete metamorphosis. So this is where most mitosis and growth will take place. Okay, so you think it's got to get from a caterpillar and change itself to be prepared to become a butterfly. So we have all this change to the cells. So the mitosis takes place, growth happens to create the new organism, and then eventually we enter the pupil stage. The pupil stage involves then reorganization and reformation of the body parts in order to obviously release the butterfly. So mitosis doesn't take place a great deal within the pupil stage. We have this other process of reorganization and reformation to produce our butterfly. Okay, so we can see egg, caterpillar, long, lots of legs into the pupil phase, so the chrysalis, and then we have this butterfly. So very, very different between the juvenile stage and the adult stage. Other insects undergo incomplete metamorphosis, where the junior stages more closely resembled the adult form, but smaller. So over here, for example, we have cockroaches. So the egg of a cockroach hatches into a nymph, which is basically just a smaller version of an adult cockroach. There's no real difference in um, structures, obviously just size. So because insects have that exoskeleton, so as we know, they don't have a backbone, they have usually a very solid outer body covering. So a complex sequence of changes needs to take place in order for the organism to remove that exoskeleton so they can get bigger. The formation of a new exoskeleton involves mitosis occurring in the epidermis. And basically, because the epidermis then expands, it causes the previous exoskeleton basically to burst and then the insect the larger insect then emerges from that an example of that is the cicada up here so we see in summer in australia lots of these cicada shells laying around and that's because the cicada on the inside has got bigger it no longer fits into its shell and it bursts out of the shell leaving the exoskeleton behind and the cicada goes on its merry way so lastly, we need to look at mitosis in mammals. So unlike some other animals, mammals cannot replace lost parts. So if we cut off our arm, we don't have the ability to grow it back unless you're some kind of X-Men. So regeneration and mitosis in mature mammals, such as adult humans, is limited to tissue repair and maintenance. Okay, so we once we reach the end of puberty, once we reach our maximum height, we don't really have any mitosis taking place for growth anymore, okay? Becoming fatter is not necessarily related to growth in this sense, more talking about the creation of cells in order to reach maximum maturity. So skin cells, blood cells, and the lining of the digestive system are cells that can undergo mitosis on a regular occurrence in order to repair or replace. So as I said in a previous video, our skin cells are constantly being regenerated because we're constantly losing them all the time. Our blood cells have a certain lifespan, so obviously we need to replace those as they die off, otherwise we will be left with none. And our digestive system is in contact with such strong acidic substances that they constantly need to be replaced in order to make sure that they're healthy. And people that aren't able to do that are those that end up with things like stomach ulcers and have quite a few problems with the acidic environment within their stomach. There are many mammalian cell types that are so specialized, however, that they actually can't undergo mitosis. So if you damage them, you're not going to replace them. So in particular, the neurons that carry messages around our nervous system are such highly specialized cells that we cannot actually replace them if we kill them or they die. Okay, so um, our nervous system is really important that we look after it properly because um, of this reason that the cells cannot be replaced. So stem cells, however, are what we call unspecialized cells. So basically that means until mitosis takes place, they can become any type of cell that the body needs which is why 
there's so much research into stem cells at the moment because they're thinking that they could remove stem cells from organisms and be able to um, use different techniques to turn them into different types of cells that are required. So most of the time, these stem cells will differentiate, which means they will change into the same cells as their surrounding cells. So if the stem cells are found in the in the bone marrow, they'll become bone marrow cells. If they're found in uh, the skin, they'll become skin cells. Okay, so they become what they're surrounded by. Mitosis is an important part of the immune response as well to help protect us against infectious diseases in which certain blood cells called lymphocytes, which are our white blood cells, will replicate themselves when exposed to certain foreign materials. So if you get an infection, your lymphocytes will remember the infection. And if you get reinfected, they will undergo mitosis rapidly in order to produce lots of them to try to stop you from getting sick again. That's why we don't often get the same infectious disease twice, such as chicken pox. Okay. And lastly, mammals go through periods of rapid growth and therefore mitosis, as we said, until maturation. Once they've finished puberty, reached their, you know, their maximum height, same thing happens throughout all mammals in the um, animal world. Once they get to that age of maturation, then mitosis slows down. Still obviously takes place, but just not as fast and not as often. Okay. So that brings us to the end of this video and thank you for watching.